Jim, un under the radar NBER, did you ever think there'd be so many articles and so much demand for what you have to say? I, I will confess, Sarah, that I've been surprised by all the attention in the last couple of weeks. Absolutely. So, so tell us, how do you define a recession? So, so the NBER has a tradition of defining recessions, peaks in economic activity in the beginning of recessions, which goes back nearly 100 years to the work of Wesley Clare Mitchell and Arthur Burns. Mitchell was the first director of research at the NBER in, in 1920. And it focuses on finding periods of time when a decline in economic activity is broadly dispersed across the economy and, and lasts for a period of, of at least several months. So it's depth, duration, and diffusion are the three features of a downturn that the NBER would typically look at in trying to identify periods that would be categorized as recessions. So is that what we're looking at right now? That's, I mean, that's the, the way the committee, uh, the Business Cycle Dating Committee, We'll try to assess uh, data as it as it emerges is is for those those attributes. Uh, the the committee doesn't rely on the two quarters of declining GDP definition for for a number of reasons. I mean, first, uh, it it looks more broadly at measures of economic activity than just than just GDP. Uh, second, it it is focused on a monthly. A chronology for peaks and troughs in economic activity. And if you're looking for monthly, you know, GDP is reported at a quarterly level. So, so other indicators will tend to be, uh, to be important. And, uh, mm -hmm. the, and the third is in some sense that something as mechanical as two quarters of negative GDP admits the possibility that if you had two quarters when there were very slight declines in GDP, you know, minus 0.1%, minus 0.1% again, uh, that might not add up to a deep decline in economic activity. Uh, think about something, you know, a weather-related disruption in economic activity, say, or some geopolitical shock, which occurs in the second half of a quarter. Uh, it reduces economic activity by just a right. bit during that quarter. It bleeds over into the next quarter. Uh, it again leads to lower economic activity then, but it resolves and it is relatively narrow in terms of its impact within the economy. One could imagine a situation in which that generates two quarters of negative GDP, uh, but it might not actually fit the, the rubric of depth, diffusion, right. and duration that would ordinarily be associated with a recession. Got it. Not that we're facing anything like that necessarily right now, just that's why you wouldn't look at only two quarters of, of negative GDP. So, Jim, yeah, no, what, this is, this what is about, to conceptually explain, yeah. in some sense, why, why, the, right. why, why something why as broader. arbitrary as the two quarters might not be helpful. What about jobs? How, how, how much does that factor into the picture? Some are wondering, how can we be in a recession when we're creating three to 400,000 jobs per month and have a 3.6% unemployment rate? How much does that I mean, factor in, in? You know, employment is certainly uh, an indicator of economic activity. It's certainly one of the, the many measures that, the, that, that would be, need to be considered in thinking about whether, uh, w whether the economy is expanding or contracting. Uh, I, I do think that it's important to know that historically, low unemployment is not, does not by itself uh, rule out the beginning of a, of a downturn because uh, the, the, the recession, the downturn is about the, the change in activity. It's not about the level. So if you go back and, and look in the, in the history uh, of some of these things, in, 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 the, in July of 1953, the NBER dates uh, a peak in, economic, peak, peak in activity, the beginning of a, of a downturn following that. Unemployment was 2.6% in, uh, in July of 1953. It began to increase in August. By October, it was up to 3.1%. Uh, so that's an example of where, despite the fact that the labor market was clearly tight at that point, when the, when the turning point arrives, right, it's that you're seeing a, a, a decline in, in the, a rise in the unemployment rate, mm -hmm. a decline in, in, in the, you know, the job market at that point.